Hello, I'm Dan Reznicek from Pacific Northwest Urology, and today we're going to be going over catheters used for hematuria. So today we're going to go over the management of hematuria or clot retention in the emergency department or hospital setting for doctors or nurses. We're going to be covering two-way Foley catheters and three-way Foley catheters. What is a hematuria catheter? And we're going to go over indications for continuous bladder irrigation. So why don't we start off with a case presentation. Today's case, we have a 65-year-old male gentleman who is currently an everyday smoker who has an abrupt onset of gross hematuria, inability to void, and a bladder scan greater than 500. He tells, me, he tells us he has been urinating blood clots for the last few days and has seen blood off and on in his urine for the last few weeks. What is the next step? Well, the first step should be decompressing the bladder with a Foley catheter and likely irrigating to remove any blood clots. So catheter review, let's go over what is a two-way Foley catheter and a three-way Foley catheter, and what is a hematuria catheter. A typical Foley catheter is a two-way device. There's a long tube with a balloon at the end of it to prevent the catheter from being removed from the bladder. Two ways on the description refers to the channel for the drainage and a channel for the balloon port that is inflated once the catheter is in the bladder. This two-way Foley catheter um, is designed and works very well for drainage and works well for hand irrigation of blood clots. If the bleeding is coming from the prostate or a urethral source, the catheter will also help tamponade the bleeding by applying pressure at the site of the bleeding. If the bleeding is coming from somewhere up higher, like the bladder or the kidney, it will not stop the bleeding by itself. So next, what is a three-way Foley catheter? Three-way Foley catheter, and what is the purpose of a three-way catheter? A three-way catheter refers to the balloon port, a drainage port, and a third port on the catheter for continuous bladder irrigation. This additional irrigation port is designed to add fluid to the bladder with continuous irrigation when there is active bleeding present. The catheter itself and the irrigation does not actively stop the bleeding. Rather, the irrigation dilutes the bleeding when present so that clots do not form. This additional port in the catheter does decrease the channel size of the catheter because this is an additional channel going through the same tube. The French refers to the outside diameter of the catheter. Thus, a three-way Foley catheter compared to a two-way Foley catheter of the same size has a smaller diameter of the outflow channel and may be a poor choice if we're deciding on a smaller catheter. So how much does the size of the catheter actually decrease the flow? So we have to look at the physics of flow through a catheter, and this is explained by the Poisson equation. In a tube of the same width and with laminar flow, liquid flows through the tube at a rate equal to the change in pressure from start to finish times pi times the radius to the fourth power over eight times the viscosity of the liquid times the length of the tube. So since catheters are all the same length and the fluid is the same viscosity, those are constants. Those variables will be the same regardless of the catheter used. So essentially what's important is that the flow is proportional to the radius of the catheter to the fourth power. Increasing the radius of the catheter by 50% increases the flow through the tube by an astounding five times, 500%. If you increase the radius by double, the flow increases 16 times. So small increases in the radius of the lumen of the catheter have an astounding impact on how much you can irrigate through that catheter. If that catheter has a narrow lumen or collapses when aspirating, the amount of flow or pressure that you can pull through that tube decreases dramatically. So I think that's a good segue and brings us to hematuria catheters. What is a hematuria catheter? Hematuria catheters are specifically designed catheters to help manage hematuria and blood clots. They come in a two-way and three-way versions. They are generally made of stiffer material that resists compression 
and have an internal nylon or metal springs that help resist compression from irrigation or aspiration. When you're pulling out clots and aspirating that tube, it prevents that from collapsing down and decreasing the flow of the clots. Generally, these catheters also have a larger opening at the tip of the catheter to allow removal of larger blood clots. Just because the catheter is larger does not mean it's designed as a hematuria catheter. On the left, here we have a 22 French three-way hematuria catheter. Notice the very large eyelet size, which is ideal to remove large clots. In the middle is an 18 French Foley catheter for comparison, and on the right, is a 24 French three-way Foley catheter. This one is not a hematuria designation and notice the smaller eyelets, which would make moving clots much more difficult. So let's move on to the next section. When to use continuous bladder irrigation. Continuous bladder irrigation is again designed to prevent new clots from forming in the bladder when active bleeding is present. It does not remove clots that are already in the bladder on its own. If there are clots already in the bladder, do not simply place a three-way Foley catheter and start irrigation. This will not remove the clots. It will only add fluid to the bladder at a constant rate. The inflow port will not get blocked if there are clots present. If a clot is present and moves, it will block the exit port. So what will happen is the bladder will fill up as fast as you're running irrigation. If the patient is elderly, frail, or has a history of radiation, it's even possible that you can rupture the bladder with continuous irrigation alone. In this case where the patient has large blood clots and is bleeding, irrigate all of the bladder first by use of hand irrigation. Use a catheter tip syringe, place the syringe in the outflow port of the catheter as it is the largest channel and the one that allows you to remove blood clots. Do not use the lure lock portion of the catheter bag. This is designed for drawing a sample of urine for cultures and is completely worthless for irrigation. When trying to irrigate clots, I usually try to aspirate prior to irrigating any new fluid in the bladder first. If the patient's bladder is completely full at the beginning, additional fluid can be painful or can rupture a full bladder. If aspiration is unsuccessful on first attempt, I try using a single irrigation of 50 to 60 milliliters of saline or water and then aggressively pulling back and aspirating on that fluid to see if you can get a clot out. You can try this again over a few times if you're able to get the amount of fluid out that you put in. If you were unable to get any fluid out and you're putting more and more fluid in, it's probably time to call a urologist. How do you know you are finished with irrigation and have all the clots out of the bladder? Well, this is a good question. If you're irrigating and a lot of clots are coming out and now none are coming out, generally that's a good sign. Also, when all the clots are out of the bladder, the irrigation should be pushed in and pulled out easily of the catheter. With a large hematuria catheter, there should be very little resistance when pulling back the fluid that you put in. If you've put 100 cc's of saline in and you're irrigating and aspirating, and you're still meeting a lot of resistance, you likely have a clot left in the bladder. So, back to our case presentation. Our 65-year-old male, gross hematuria, was having clots and is now unable to void. We placed a 22 French hematuria catheter, and we irrigated and aspirated out 150 milliliters of clot from the bladder. Remember, just pushing fluid in does not pull the clots out. You have to actively aspirate to pull them out. Once these clots were out, at that point, the urine was light pink. The patient was feeling well. He was monitored for two hours to make sure he did not form any new clots and was discharged home. Well, what if that patient had continued dark red urine or bright red urine and was forming new clots requiring multiple irrigations? after that two hours of observation. Well, at that point, it would be a good idea to go back in and irrigate the clots that are present by hand first. And at that point, consider placing a three-way Foley catheter and starting continuous bladder irrigation. If you are starting continuous bladder irrigation at our institution, 
it would be a good idea to call for a urology consult. So to summarize, in a patient with hematuria, choose a hematuria catheter that is designed to specifically treat hematuria. These catheters are a larger size, they are stiffer, they have bigger ports and bigger um, channels to pull the clots out. If one is not present, place a larger and stiffer catheter that your institution has that will allow irrigation better if needed. Choosing a smaller catheter for hematuria may actually be harmful and require the patient more pain later as it does not remove the clots and they'll have to place new Foley catheters. Do not ever use an 18 French three-way catheter for continuous bladder irrigation. Again, this catheter is completely worthless. All right, that's all we had for the video today. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, please put comments below or subscribe to our channel.